I am joined with Corey McKenna. Now, Corey, I'm going to absolutely wreck this girl's name. And I feel really bad, but I can't. I've got to be honest with you. I can't get. I can't. Great Eckhout. Sounds right to me. Yeah, sounds right. Yeah, good, good. Okay, so that's who you're facing. Great. We'll call a big. We'll call a big G. Uh, her nickname's Pineapple. So I don't know where she gets. It must be something to do with the hair. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, but aside from that, you're both on a bit of a win streak, which is good. Positive uh, fight coming in. Two you on a bit of a win streak. But for you, you don't really care. Probably you just want to take her out and get back. Uh, get back in that contention for maybe getting Cage Warriors to get a strap on the line for you. Yeah, I mean, um, like you say, I'm just taking everything one fight at a time. Uh, not really too worried about the bell or focusing on anything like that. I'm just kind of focusing on this fight and uh, we'll, we'll see what opportunities it, it presents afterwards. I saw you and Mason at T Team Alpha, male and female, or bi non-binary, team non-binary. Um, you, did you and Mason hang out quite a lot? Did you show him around a bit, a bit more? Because you've been there a little bit. I think you've been there a few more times than he has, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I've been there a few more times, but like, I mean, he he knows he knows how it works, and he yeah. fits in well enough himself. So, kind of just saw each other on the mats and uh, had a little chat here and there, like around training. But uh, no one say say we hung out around too much. Ah, right. Okay. Well, I, I was going to say because it's nice to see though. There's a bit of a kind of contingency coming over to Team Alpha Male, you, you know, you lot are all getting a lot of experience from it and getting a lot of knowledge and getting a lot of sunshine, um, which is helpful. But is it just something that you got, You felt you guys feel that like you're connected that gym? Is it just something about everyone there that you kind of feel like a family vibe or something? Um, I obviously can't speak for Mason, but uh, for myself, like you say, I, I, I do feel like I fit in quite well out there. Like, there's a lot of like-minded fighters, um, which is obviously great for myself. So, like on that, ter like in terms of like fitting in and stuff, like, I obviously do feel like I get along really well there. Um, in terms of choosing the gym, it's like more stylistically. I feel like stylistically, I fit in as well. Like they've got that aggressive kind of striking style with the, yeah. the with the wrestling and everything. Like, I just feel like stylistically with and how I go along with the coaches and everything. Um, yeah, I just I feel like it's a good gym for myself. Now I have seen it feels like Uriah is taking you under his wing a little bit. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a there's a friendship and a bond there. I can see that. I think he's you're his favourite Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> well, he he's insistent on poppins. That's what he calls me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very fortunate. He puts a lot of time into me. You know I mean, he's always putting in the extra pad work. Like he'll come in half hour before class to get a few rounds in. Uh, he actually jumps in on my sparring rounds and stuff. So, like, you know, he is really, like you say, taking me under his wing and putting a lot of work into me, which, you know, is a big confidence booster dogs. Well, clearly he sees something. So, um, yeah, I'm obviously really appreciative of everything he's done for me. Um, well, I was going to say, because not just obviously on the pad work, but he's got a very, very good business sense. You know, he's obviously not just in the fight. He knows the fight game really well. He also knows outside of the fight game ways to promote yourself, way to work it. Has he been able to? Has he been lending any of that information to you as well? Is it is obviously not just pad work, for example. It's obviously a bit more than that. Um, I mean, like we always have, like I can't really say examples in the, uh, exactly, but like yeah. you know, we're, we're chatting, like we'll chill after training, or you know, like, whilst watching the fights and stuff. And it's always nice to get into like conversations. Like you say, he's got a very uh, sensible head on him, and he's he's always good to have a chat to and uh, learn from. And now he's Papa. He's Papa, you're right. He's got the little one now as well. So I bet that keeps. I bet that's uh, good times for him having a little one run, running around. And obviously, is uh, is obviously. I imagine his mindset a bit different now that he's got he's got fatherhood in his life. Yeah, I mean, he spoils that kid. Like he loves it a bit. <laughs> she's an adorable mind. Uh, and Sarah McMahon's baby's always on the side of the mats as well. It's too much. Too much cuteness. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, yeah, Sarah, man, she is an absolute savage of a woman. She's got the babies. She's in great shape. And I would, I've got to be honest, Corey, I would, even I would hate to wrestle with her. So I couldn't even <laughs> imagine what it's like for you coming to a wrestling session with her. Um, well, I see, uh, she's actually like my main training partner for this pretty much entire camp. Like, oh. um, we quite enjoy, we get along really well, obviously, good friends. So uh, it's, it's nice to have someone, obviously, at that level and to get along with them. 
Uh, so she, I trained with her pretty much like every class or at least pro practice. Um, and like you say, she's such a high level and such like she's a lovely woman as well. She's not like you know she's not she's not like you say brutal or anything. But uh, <laughs> yeah, like you make you make Sally like she's like killer. But yeah, like she's, she's on, really on the nice mat. And on the mat, yeah, on the mat. I'd imagine wrestling would just be, gosh, I'd be like no, no thanks. <laughs> Yeah, but like I say, that, that no one, especially in Europe, is going to be at that level. Um, so mm, for yeah. me to be getting high, arguably the highest level um, available to me, like it's you know it's priceless. So uh, very yeah. fortunate, like you say, in that in that regard to get so much work in with her, um, and it only just like you say fills me with confidence because I've been I've been working at the highest level with the highest level for so long. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say because like obviously she'll have all those lovely little tricks, those little little things, those intricate details that. For you and I, it would be just like you wouldn't think about it, and then they do it, and you think you're having a laugh. Is that was that was that all you to do? And you think, oh, yeah. I mean, like everyone's always showing me actually little bits after class. Like they'll be like, oh, you did this, but like if you do this slightly different, and then like it blows my mind. So uh, yeah, like you say, all the entries <laughs> and everything for sure. Yeah. So is this a, is this something? Do you like to maybe move out there full time or something? Is that is that maybe part because obviously, um, like Richard Shaw, for example, they've got that. They're doing the gym. They're doing, you know, the, fa- the facility there. Um, what, what have you got? Any kind of goals like that? Maybe you're going to see how that plays out with that facility, or are you thinking long term? Would you maybe look to move over to uh, over to Cali? I guess it's all circumstantial, isn't it? Like, yeah. say, uh, there's a great training facility being opened up at Tillery Combat mm-hmm. in November. Um, you know, obviously, I've got a great foundation out of Team Alpha Male. So it really, it really just depends what the future holds, how fights go, and I'm kind of like say just taking it one fight at a time. I'm in no rush. Yeah, and I saw in your downtime you were enjoying the landscape, which looked fantastic. A bit of bit of climbing here and there. Is that just is that is that is that just something part of the downtime you like to enjoy and just get away from the kind of city, so to speak, and the great outdoors? Um. Well, I mean, like, see, it's a lovely area, regardless. But yeah. um, I've been meaning to get like that was that was uh, went to Tahoe. Uh, been meaning to get down there, kind of every trip but it's quite far away and i obviously don't drive out there because i will definitely drive on the wrong side of the road and end up killing someone mm-hmm. so um yeah so i don't drive whilst i'm out there but my friend was free and he was like, oh, i was gonna go so uh yeah definitely something I wanted to experience and uh see of course yeah it looked oh it looked fantastic it looked so good some of the views there i lo- i a uh, little bit envious um now obviously this fight coming up you want to end the year on a high have you then been focused? Have you watched any tape of her, by the way, or have you just kind of left it to Uriah and Richard, or who have you? Who, what have you been doing for this one in particular? Yeah, I mean, I watched a bit of her on, um, on my own, obviously. Uh, but to be honest, I, I only really, really ever do that at the very start, like when they give me a name, mm. um, just have a little check out. But to be honest, like when it comes to camp, I'm focusing on myself and just making sure that I'm prepared and the best I can be in all round. You know, yeah. what I, mean? I don't. Like, I don't like to focus on what they're going to do. I just like no. to focus on myself and make sure I implement my game. Um, obviously, Uriah studied the tape and stuff, did some game plan drilling. Um, so, yeah, but other than, other than that, like I said, I'm not really, not really too fussed about what she does, to be honest. Yeah, I like to know... Uh, my, my, the main thing for me is I like to know the height. Because I like to know a little bit about the range they're going to have. If they're, if they're short or if they're tall. Because, like, you know, you've got Andre Philly, for example, at Alpha Male. He's rather tall for the weight class. So you would probably, you know, do, so I like to get an idea. If I've got an opponent, I, or if someone's fine, yeah, I like to know this, the height, so you can start the slight game plan for the height side of things. You know, if they're tall, long, how do you get into the short game? Those are the kind of things I think are the more, and then, like say, focus on your game that way then. Yeah, well, I don't generally have to worry about people being shorter than me. Uh, uh, Nick- yeah, well, just a freak, freak person every now and then it might be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, nicknamed her it for a reason, but uh, <laughs> I think she's actually the same height as me. Um, whether she rounds up to five three like I do, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Nutrition wise, when you're over there, obviously they, they've got fantastic kind of uh, people there to help out with that. Um, have you then been bulking, so to speak? I mean, obviously, uh, building up the muscle, but not too, so much that the, the weight cut would be tough? 
what have you been doing in that sense? Because obviously you're starting to fill out into your body. Obviously when you get, you know, the kind of, like your late teens, early 20s, you start to fill out a bit more. Have you been focusing on anything like that, by the way, strength and conditioning wise? Um, I well, strength and conditioning, obviously I keep up with year round. Yeah. Um, yeah, like pretty much just keeping the power output up, like make sure we're improving on that. Um, I've got a, my conditioning coach is uh, James Mitchell. Uh, back in Cardiff, like he sends mm. my programs. But uh, in terms of nutrition plan, again, like not necessarily focus on bulking, just make sure I'm getting the right amount of calories, feeling good, getting the training in, staying sharp, and then obviously cutting down, ready for the fight. Nice, nice. I was going to say, so now that you're back, back home, are you going to be staying for Christmas? Are you enjoying family time, the uh, family time, Christmas, a couple of mince pies? Um, I like I say, I don't know. Uh. I'm not one of those people that plans ahead too much. Uh, take one fight at a time. You never know, might get another fight, might end up doing something else. I've got a few things planned that, like, not got dates on. Mm. So it really just it just depends kind of how things go. Um, yeah. I, like, I, thought, I thought Christmas is, like, the kind of the green light to go, I'm allowed to put a few pounds on because they're fat. It's fat-free mince pies, aren't they? Yeah. And, 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 a, and, and Christmas dinner, isn't it just vegetables? Yeah, it's just vegetables with a load of gravy. That's all it is. You say that. I, I think last Christmas I actually did just have some turkey and veg. So, uh, oh. yeah, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, um, like I say, I've always just got my training and my my fights in in mind. So uh, I'm not really, not really focusing too much on the other stuff. You don't have to worry because do you know what? The quality street size tubs they're smaller. They aren't the same size they used to be, so you can't actually put as much on. Well, BKK, if you eat two of something, they cancel each other out. So, as so long as you have, like... Oh, that's two... good maths. I didn't know that. That's bro science, isn't it? Yeah. Like, proven. That is proven, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll... Do you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to have... I've had a cookie today, because I bake cookies. I'm going to have another one, and that cancels that other one out, doesn't it? But then you might as well have another one. Because then you didn't have any cookies. Yeah. I've got to make sure I've got... I make even cookies, so I, they always cancel each other out. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And even amount of chocolate chips in each one. That's it. That's it. Simple maths. Bro science. I love it. I love this. I'm going to have to make notes, folks. <laughs> and I'll easily make 185 pounds. Easy. <laughs> I'm only 205 now. It's fine. It's only 20 pounds. It's nothing. It's a couple, couple of cookies away. You made that tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. A couple of cookies away. Easy work. Easy work. Uh, like I said, Corey, I've been I'm following the social media side that you've been doing. And what I've really enjoyed is, the, like you say, the kind of relationship with the fighters that you have over there now, over time, you kind of, it builds up and it builds up. Uh, for yourself, do you feel a lot more, like, I say at home, but do you feel a lot more, you get more out of the training because you've been there now for an extended period of time collectively? Do you start to feel now you're getting a lot more from the sessions and a lot more from the training with the folks and everyone? Yeah, I mean, like you say, I've got a, I've got like a good setup there now. Like I know who I'm going to partner up with. Uh, kind of like that foundation. I'm not like you know say, don't I don't struggle for partners or anything because every, everyone knows who I am, what level I'm at, and stuff, which is cool. Like say like sparring on Wednesdays, no one's ever afraid to kind of just grab me and go. Yeah. Um. So I think, but this is the same everywhere. It's not just out there. You know what I mean, like even back here, like you, you know, you kind of got to get, kind of got to get used to people get comfortable with people uh you know just kind of yeah. uh, build that on respect up isn't it yeah uh, yeah exactly that's what i mean so it does take time and now that like you say you've got that kind of familiarity everyone kind of knows what you can do where you're at it, you probably get more from your sessions than you would do the first time around you were there for example it's probably yeah. it's probably a vast difference between the two sessions if you compared your first sparring session to your last one yeah, exactly. Like, because like, like, see, now I know, who, you know, who who I want to work with. They they mm. would like that work with me. Like, and like you say, yeah, uh, it's pretty much. I think you said it there. Yeah, and it's good. It's good though because you, you it means then that we'll see more out of you for for example for this fight because there's the comfortable kind of fight camps. You're getting far more information. You're downloading it. You're keeping it more absorbing it more, and obviously they're just improving you constantly giving you more to grow and round off your skill set as well you know like you say you'll know there's fights that you had previously where a couple of things you weren't happy with 
but now you can go back to this fight and go, well, I'm, I've, I've just basically polished off that area. I feel a lot more confident if it goes to that circumstance again. Yeah, and like you say, also, obviously, the more time you put into like, a place, the more time they put into you. So mm. the coaching attention that I've received lately is, like, ridiculous. You know what I mean? So um, definitely made some big gains and uh, look forward to put it, you know, put it on show. Yeah, but I don't think I'll ever... I'll never be satisfied with the performance. I'll, there'll always be mistakes. No one's perfect. No, no, no. You you never get that. You'll always have those little things where you think, yeah, you think, yeah. Why, why didn't I just do that? You're such a fool. And even though you could even absolutely batter someone, you'll still be like, oh, I fucked that up. I shouldn't have done this. And it's just, it's just what you do, isn't it? It's a fight game. It's instant split second decisions. Yeah, it was like my first fight. Everyone was like, oh, well, you just, you landed all the strikes, took her down, and then just dominant on top. But like, there were still points in the fight where I made mistakes. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like you say, I, I think that's the over like being overcritical of yourself, that's kind of what obviously keeps you constantly improving and everything anyway. I think if you lose that mentality, that's when you stop kind of progressing anyway. Yeah, yeah, it keeps you on your toes, yeah. You keep, you, you know, you're being honest with yourself, not just sitting there blowing smoke up your ass is the best way to say it. That's why like, people come out of a fight and they're like, oh, but I won. And then they put it behind them. I don't, I don't get that. Because, like, mm. at the end of the day, I always say it's like you spend so long training. This, the fight is the fight is a test at the end of the day. Like, if you were at school, you'd be studying and then you'd, yeah. you'd do a test. Like, that's basically what what we're doing. Yeah. Um, You know, and you wouldn't disregard your test results. So that's what I've always said. I was like, the fight's where I test myself and I go away to improve on the areas that I've shown weakness. Yeah, I remember years ago doing an amateur fight and I, was, I, I, I nailed a peak I peaked out, nailed it, but I just didn't put the weight on him when I when I peaked out to keep the pressure off him. So we ended up getting back on top. And I just couldn't get my head around it in the fight. I was like, I'm getting this, I'm getting out. I'm getting... And like you say, until you watch the tape back and go, yeah. Because I didn't do that one little thing. Went back, drilled it, nailed it, and I'm all right now. But it was one of those things where, like you say, You've got to sometimes just be critical of yourself. And yeah, I did get out, but I also had to go out a couple of times. Um, Self-critical uh, kind of analysis is a great thing to have, as long as you don't be too obsessive about too much. Because you, like you say, you can't have a perfect fight. You can't always get everything dead on, um, because you can't foresee what they will do. You can't foresee your opponent's moves. Exactly, and like you say, that the higher the level, the harder the fights. Um, it's very yeah. easy for people. To be critical of the mistakes you make but at the end of the day if, if you're not fighting absolute cans then they're going to give you give you something to kind of work with and it's not necessarily always going to be the prettiest fight because at the end of the day like say I, I, I'm, I'm fighting the best girls in Europe so yeah. I'm not I'm going to take a couple of punches I'm going to you know have some awkward moments but you, um, want them. you need them because it <laughs> helps you round off your character helps you actually improve yeah and it's, it's progression as well like you say I, I mm. can't be I can't make a career off fighting these bums that, you know, that I can look good against because yes. eventually I found out, like, I want to be a champion. I don't want to have a, you know, great record or look cool yeah. or be great on I want to be world champ, so I need to be fighting these tough girls and improving on mistakes and, like you say, stri well, striving for the perfect fight. I always strive for the perfect fight, but you just don't get it necessarily at the level, you know? Yeah, and look, you are getting the fights, and the good thing about Cage Warriors is, Ian Dean, the freak machine, finds the fights that make good fights. He fight, he just goes, oh, who's my match a cup for Corey? Here you go, we're going to get this girl. And you think, okay, let's go. And it, it turns out to be a hell of a fight. And, and Ian Dean's a freak like that. He does that all the time. He finds these fighters sometimes that you think, I've not really, I don't really know that fighter that well. And then he turn up and they're absolute savages. He's just a monster, Ian Dean, like that. It's, uh, I, I've got plenty of time for him. Fantastic guy as well. Nice, really nice human being. I feel like it's the women's MMA scene anyway. Like, there's not that many girls anyway, and like, no one really, especially around Europe, a lot of us haven't heard of each other, you know. Um, so yeah, they'd always pull out a good fight though. Yeah, I think I think your name's getting around though, Corey. I think people are starting to know who you are, so you can't you can't go under the radar. You see now, that's it. You see, Thanks. you're famous. <laughs> yeah, you know the name. Yeah, <laughs> and. Well, I was going to say, before I let you go, Corey, uh, can you give everyone your social media uh, and Corey. let them follow you on it? Yeah, Corey McKenna 99 on Instagram, Twitter. Got a Facebook page, Corey mm. McKenna. It's all really original. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It took a while to think of, yeah. Yeah, 
why well, yeah it's been changed it's more professional but uh see that's what you do when you're young you see i remember having a stupid email account and then when i went for a job i went i had to put that in a cv and i went ah might need to change that uh so i did so like you say social media when you're young is good but when you get old you think ah, i need to make that a little tweak um <laughs> sound a bit more sound a little bit more professional what about your sponsors though Corey? who's helping you out sponsor wise um been very fortunate i had a couple of cash sponsors for this one um obviously went away for 12 weeks it's a, it's a long time that i'm as much as like team alpha helped me out you know i'm on the i'm on, I'm on their uh little uh scholarship scheme out there so it's not as bad but like mm. still it's california so it's expensive <laughs> um, so i want to just say thanks to uh, franklin group and dcl uh you know they've been amazing and obviously to tommy and q and t like long-term sponsors um like they're, they're kind of like the main ones obviously i'll be posting up my banner soon so everyone could check out everyone else but uh yeah like they've been massive help this camp that's awesome and last but not least you mentioned team alpha male Sarah camp, but is there anyone you've not mentioned maybe that you want to give a shout out to and just give thanks um like you say obviously everyone at team alpha male the coaches chris oldsworth danny castillo uriah faber like everyone joey um, but also the lads back at Tulare, you know what I mean? Like they they are my home gym. Um, obviously fighting in Wales, so looking forward to being on the card with all of them. And uh, it's going to be a great night. It is going to be a great night. Awesome card again, Corey. Thanks for your time and have a great fight. Enjoy enjoy the fight week. Enjoy the process, and it'd be good to see what you bring to the table this time round.